Hello everyone, greetings from Pakistan. Until 2000, when I retired from my successful practice as a star architect, I had been among the most wasteful architects in Pakistan. I have to admit that I had indulged in an extravagant, egotistic journey, which largely focused on serving the elite of my country. Having designed architectural edifices for the 1% with the most wealth, as defined by French economist Thomas Piketty, during the 1980s and 90s, I had a field day in choosing the most exotic and expensive materials, such as concrete and steel, along with imported granite cladding and aluminum glazing. Way back in 1987, the Brundtland Commission report had emphasized sustainable development and in particular, meeting the needs of the world's poor. But even three decades later, Prima Donna architects, driven by the desire to create star architecture for the select few, unthinkingly continue to exploit Earth's resources with little thought of sustainability. I probably would also have not learned to build zero carbon structures had it not been due to a quirk of fate. It was the devastating 7.6 Richter scale earthquake that hit Pakistan, northern Pakistan in 2005, resulting in 80,000 casualties and displacement of 400,000 families that transformed my architectural perceptions. Today, all of us need to be aware of the rising levels of poverty, enormous disparities within our societies, the impact of global warming, climate emergencies, and recurring disasters climate change migrants and conflict impelled camps for the displaced, as well as of the debilitating impact of COVID-19. We know that worldwide building industry is responsible for at least 40% of energy uses, 60% of uh, water usage, 3 billion tons of raw material, and 15 to 20% of waste stream. We also know that cement and steel have excessive energy requirement in production and burnt brick is not far behind. We should also be aware that being responsible for 65 to 70 percent of greenhouse gas emissions, our urban centers will remain global warming battlegrounds unless urban environment professionals devise ways to begin creating eco enclaves with the ultimate objective of converting present cities into eco cities. Those are the factors that have led me to campaign for zero carbon or carbon negative movements to change mindsets of urban design professionals. It has become imperative to discontinue the use of contemporary industrialized materials, building materials, and revert to traditional sustainable green materials in order to lower the carbon footprint and create climate responsive designs. There are three strands that are consciously integrated in all my work, learning from tradition and heritage, community engagement for co-building and co-creation, and reliance on barefoot approaches. I have found that there is a synergy between social well-being and ecological justness when traditional sustainable materials are used for construction. Today, my fellow travelers are those that walk barefoot. I have found that walking without shoes helps us to tread lightly on the planet and use Earth's resources judiciously. Today, my life's mission is to find ways to build for BOP or bottom of the pyramid, as well as to deal with the climate change impact by reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. And the dictum I follow is low cost, zero carbon footprint, and zero waste. Using Baza mechanism, we have been able to reach out to 0.84 million people or over 100,000 persons per year through provision of basic needs. Also, we have been able to work towards 12 out of 17 sustainable development goals. So there are four tenets of Baza. Baza is a result of my struggle over the last decade and a half to articulate people's humanistic architecture as part of rights-based development, incorporating attributes of social and ecological justice. Baza is akin to social engineering for bringing about social change incorporating environmental, cultural, and technical dimensions, resulting in transformation of mindsets from a cycle of dependency to a culture of pride and self-reliance. First, the Baza tenet number one, which is maximizing the potential of barefoot ecosystem. As you can see in the slide, the barefoot ecosystem consists of barefoot economy, barefoot market, barefoot enterprises, barefoot entrepreneurs, barefoot skills, and barefoot products. In contrast to the market economy with its aim for personal profit, Baza creates a parallel, informal, and inclusive economy that fosters collective benefit by serving disadvantaged populace. 
Now this is tenant number two, zero carbon humanistic architecture fostering pride, dignity and well-being. This tenant encourages participatory co-building using sustainable materials and building upon age-old techniques. There are, these are some of the slides to demonstrate co-creation activities. These are houses are being decorated by women to show their pride and their ownership of what they have. And this is a bamboo house and a toilet as a mark of identity. You can see how beautifully decorated this is. And this is a well habitat winner, Erdan Pakistan Chula. This Erdan cook stove provides dignity for women and assures health for children. Uh, as far as my work is concerned, I am an advocate of earth, lime and bamboo, as these are among the most sustainable materials, which are the only materials I use in my current work. Now we come to Baza tenet number three, which is delivery of unmet needs through Biscus, which is barefoot incubator for social good and environmental sustainability. Now this is a Biscus training center at uh, uh, ZC3 or Zero Carbon Cultural Center at Zero Carbon Campus at Makli. And here that is where we have the incubators being trained. They are provided mentoring and monitoring. And uh, these are the poorest of the communities that we are training. And they fabricate products for the other poor in order to fulfill their primary uh, needs as well as unmet needs uh, of the surrounding communities. Each of the eight former beggar villages specialize in affordable, good quality products consisting of green construction materials such as uh, earth, lime, bamboo, and thatch organic soap, organic compost, and natural fuel briquettes, climate smart farming for food security, craft products for everyday use for achieving a better quality of life. Now this now is uh, tenant number four, which is non-engineered structures for shrinking the ecological footprint. Now these uh, structures such as this uh, one have uh, placed Pakistan in the lead as the largest zero carbon shelter program in the world. As you see, no carbon emissions, no trees were felled, 1,750 villages were served and 300,000 persons were housed. Now this is a two-story two structure that has withstood annual inundation since 2011. The ground floor is a, as a shaded area is usually uh, used for children's uh, uh, activities. During floods, as the waters rise, the upper floor becomes a refuge for people and their belongings. Now this is an example of prefabricated structures. Uh, it is based on a mod a modular construction using prefabricated bamboo panel for ease of fabrication and transportation. These can be prepared in advance and can be erected very quickly. Eight panels are used to build a one room house of 12 foot by 12 foot size. Then addition of two more panels makes a village classroom of 12 by 18 size. And by using 12 panels, you add on another two, a village center of size 18 by 18 is constructed, while a three module combination makes into Interbau Center at Makli. And you can see that we've used a dome, the domical form, which actually we've learned from Makli, which has lots of domes because of the monuments that are there. Here you can see that um, it was tested at uh, NAD University in Karachi and subject sequentially to ground motions corresponding to Kobe earthquake earthquake of 7.3 rectus scale. Levels applied were from 25% to 100% and within from 125% to 275% with no damage to the structure and later subjected to 670% which uh, hopefully never happens but you will see that walls did not collapse which showed life safety performance under extreme conditions and uh, here is the shaking table test itself. So you will see that uh, uh, first, it's, this is 100% 100, 100 of Kobe earthquake, which means this is exactly what happened at the time of the earthquake, and you can see nothing happened. And then uh, uh, it goes on to 275%, and again, nothing happens. And we can see that it is nothing but earth walls and bamboo interlacements and bamboo lattice that has been used in the structure. And when uh, it didn't uh, it didn't collapse, uh, the vice chancellor there said it has got to we've got to break it. So they went up to 670 percent of the uh, of the movements. In my view, New York or Dubai with their high carbon, high density, glittering skyscrapers will no longer be the urbanist future beacon. I'm optimistic that instead lessons will be drawn upon age old wisdom and traditional env environments found in countries such as Pakistan. 
aiming for low-rise, medium-density formations with open-to-sky terraces for families to remain in contact with nature when a pandemic strikes, with pedestrian enclaves and local round-the-corner shopping without being disrupted by vehicular traffic. Also, there are several lessons we could learn from the past, uh, consisting of zero energy natural devices, which can provide comfortable microclimate within buildings without employing mecha mechanical means. These bring about traditional benefits uh, when formulating eco-urbanist strategies. On the left is the zero carbon wind cooling that can be attained by the unidirectional wind catcher of Tata, where incoming breeze provides thermal control air movement as well as warm air exhaust. On the right uh, is the zero energy thermal comfort that is achieved by utilizing passive solar design and thermal mass. The courtyard helps cool air during the night, keeping the interiors cool for much of the day. This is a technique that's used a lot in uh, uh, some parts of Pakistan. On the left, among the best examples of zero energy water cooling is the Paradisal Jahar Bagh of uh, World Heritage Shalimar Gardens with spectacular water displays creating a cool environment entirely by natural means. And on the right, uh, water is also used in the Paradisal Quadrants in the Shish Mahal enclosure of the World Heritage Lahore Fort. We have seen that traditional urbanism is a result of local wisdom, use of sustainable materials and techniques for minimizing the use of energy. Many of us believe that traditional urbanism equals eco-urbanism and there is an urgent need to transform our present wasteful urban centers into low carbon eco enclaves. So what does it mean? Compact cities, not urban sprawl methods or models, low rise, medium density, mixed use development, not skyscrapers to keeping, uh, keeping short distances to work, then vehicle free, walkable, cultural activity, forested streets, plantation and water bodies for transforming urban microclimate, low impact architecture that minimizes energy consumptive materials in construction and seeks for net energy solutions. And above all, saving all heritage buildings as any replacement will only add to further carbon emissions. Also, there are good examples for, uh, for example, <coughs> Oslo that could be emulated. So we need such attributes to lead our cities towards low carbon resilience and enable us to help contain emissions to within 1.5 degrees centigrade rise stipulated by COP21 Paris Agreement of 2015. The implication of COVID-19 exhort us to move towards a society that is humanistic and inclusive. Together we must endeavor to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as we fashion a new urban environment based on more sustainable lifestyles, adopting movements such as transition design, degrowth or low carbon compact cities, which are becoming popular in the West. In my own barefoot social architecture or Baza for achieving SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals, as well as sustenance of the disadvantage of the third world. In conclusion, I would like to ask this question that I have asked audiences around the world. And that the question is, knowing the state of the planet as it is today, are we ready to play a role in mending the imbalances in this world and to help stitch the highly damaged Earth's tapestry? Thank you.